Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Catch, and I am back for the hashtag 50 stack challenge five. Uh, this is a 25 week prompt assignment challenge. Each week I draw two prompts out of my bag. All the prompts are in the bag from the beginning of the challenge. Um, and then the idea is to make one piece of ephemera or a collage or whatever it is you like to make. Um, one piece for each of the prompts. So for example, last week I did number 33 was monster. And so for monster, I chose a dragon and then I made this piece of ephemera um, using my dragon rider kit. So this c comes out of here entirely. Um, and then there's another tag that once this is attached to a journal page, for example, I'm just going to use this, just pretend it's a little bit smaller. But anyway, you could put it in the corner, you could put it in the middle of a page, however you decide to do that for your journal, and then there will be another uh, tag back there. So that's the piece I made for Monster. And you can interpret these however you want. Um, there are no 50 stack challenge police, so do whatever you want. It's just a, a a way to maybe use some different things than you normally would. And uh, this this challenge is totally random, so the, the things don't really even go together, but it's just kind of a fun way to build up your ephemera. That's the point of it. So number 34 is a robot, and I want you guys to have fun. I don't want it to be like, oh, I can't think of anything for that, you know? So I did this paint chip, and a paint chip is like a paint sample that you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's or a paint store or whatever and uh, get these chips. I backed it so you can't even see the back, but anyway. And then I took these robots, which were a freebie on last Monday's uh, video, and I fussy cut them out entirely and then put them on my paint chip with other bits and pieces. So that's what I had for... A robot and you it says a robot you can use as many or a few or whatever as you like okay so we are on number 35 so 35 will be I'm gonna move these so we don't have any confusion 35 will be something new to you whatever that is so for example this might be a fantastic example and I may do that um, my awesome friend Carol Laws did some faux paint chips because she's in the UK and she can't get, um, paint chips like these. So she took pieces of paper from Joey Cardmaker, um, that had, he does his, uh, mashup kits. If you guys haven't seen him, go over to Kofi and check him out, Joey Cardmaker. And, um... He uses like one color, like this month he did blue. So it's all different backgrounds and stuff in blue. So she took those and made, you know, did three sections kind of like this to make her own paint chip cards. And they are so cool. So pop over to Carol Law's channel if you haven't already seen the video because it's fantastic um, what she did. And so that would be, that's new to me doing it with, uh, different papers. So that's what I mean by when I say something new to you. Okay. So these cards made measure seven by three, just so you know, if you want it to be the same size as this, but of course you can make them any size that you want. So something new to you, that's, that's what I'll say, but it doesn't have to be that you can use anything, just something that maybe you've seen somebody else use and you haven't used, you know, and then uh, 36 is dream. So you can do this two ways. You could do, um, say you dreamt about flowers. You could do something with flowers. Or you could do a bigger scope of like maybe a dream job or, you know, whatever you want. Do what you want to do. It's just a jumping off point of to make a piece of ephemera. So you do it however you want to do it. Okay, I'm going to get some things together and I will be right back. Okay, I am back. So um, the first one we're going to do is something new to you. And so I am going to do the um, like faux paint uh, chip card 
like Carol Laws did. So I'm stealing this idea from you, Carol. <laughs> it's just super fun with the printed uh, backgrounds rather than the plain ones uh, with the paint chips. I mean, I mean, I like the plain ones too, but anyhow, we're going to do Christmassy one. So it's, uh, I guess you could say I'm sort of cheating because it doesn't seem very new to me, right? Since I did a whole bunch of paint chip type cards, but <clears throat> it's just a new kind and I wanted to make one. So I'm going to, that's what I mean when I say you can interpret these however you want. You don't have to go all crazy and try to um, do something that nobody else has done or, you know, whatever. Just have fun with it and make something you want to make and use the prompt, you know what I mean? So I am going around the edge just a little. I don't want these like super grungy, but I do want that edge done because I am doing this white so I don't want, I don't want them to get super grungy, even though I love super grungy. So how are y'all doing? I hope you're all fantastic. I am having a good day. This is a different day than when I drew the prompts. Usually is because it takes me a while to figure out what in the world I want to do. But, um, but I'm having a good day. Just been busy. Went and got a haircut and all that jazz. Don't have to get my hair cut colored anymore because I'm allergic to the hair color so <laughs> even if I want to I can't do that oh boy getting older is so fun I need to say hugs and blessings to Kimberly Shaw and Kimberly mentioned which this is a new idea to me and I was like wow that's kind of brilliant if if you can um like if there's a time maybe you're going to cook dinner. If you just turn on one of my videos, even if you don't listen to it, like you turn it on your phone or whatever, you don't have to pay any attention, like if you've already watched it. But she was saying, sorry, there's all the little things that get stuck to these, um, that she watches someone and they mentioned if you let their videos run, even if you're not watching or paying any attention, I mean, of course you can pay attention, but... Um, letting them run for long periods of time all the way through, you know, multiple videos in a row, that it helps th the videos get out, you know, it helps with the algorithm. If I could say the words, it would be fantastic. So uh, I thought that was a very slick idea. So I've been, during the day while I'm working, I just turn my TV on downstairs and I go to my YouTube channel or someone else's, a friend of mine, whatever, and I turn it on, you know, go to their channel, and then um, click, it's like run, oh, why can't I think of what it's called now, you know, where you can just let it run, it'll pick all different videos, and it'll just run video after video after video, and you don't have to keep going and clicking on a video. So that's what I've been doing and it really kind of does help because I've gotten a few more subscriptions the last few days that I've been doing it and I, I think I think that's kind of a genius idea. If you can, who whatever channels you like, it doesn't ha even have to be my channel, say you like somebody else and you want them to get more views or whatever, um, just turn on their their channel and tell it to run, I can't, why can't I remember the word? Oh my goodness. Anyway, run their videos and then they get, they get more views, you know, all that kind of stuff and it just helps with the algorithm. Sorry, that was a horrible explanation, but I think you might understand what I mean. And if you don't wanna to listen to me yammer, like I get it, just mute it or whatever. If you, if you can do that. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm not, if you just don't want to do that, don't do it. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that is a way that you could help my channel. And I would appreciate it greatly. Or someone else's, Gail, whoever, whoever's channel you want to help. But I thought that was a brilliant idea. Oh, so I didn't tell you guys anything about this because I got 
chatting. And I also want to say hugs and blessings to Jaretta and Carol, who did this paint chip video. And if you haven't seen Carol's video where she does the faux paint chips, go check it out because, oh my gosh, it is just the best video. She did so many of them and they were so cute. So this is seven inches long and three inches wide. And then these little strips of color are three inches wide, obviously, by two and a quarter. So super simple. You just cut them and you saw me. I put the bottom one on first, then the top one, and then the middle one. So you can kind of get your spacing, you know, a little bit more how you would want it. So it looks like it was intentional, right? I don't know where I put my own. Oh, put that out of the way. Let's cut some corners. So yeah, just a thought. Of course, you don't have to do that, but if you can, it would be fantastic. Or if you're vacuuming, throw a video on, ignore it, whatever. <laughs> it's just the running of them makes um, YouTube go, oh, people like this, and they're watching lots of this person's videos, or they're watching these videos all the way through kind of thing. And that tells the algorithm that, you know, put it out there, more people might want to see it kind of thing. So... I can't decide which one of these I want. Oh, I need to show you my new Christmas digital. I do like her because I think she would go really well. Well, I think any of these actually time period wise would, would work. And these two girls are so cute. They're just adorable. And I need a piece out of that new kit, so I'm gonna show it to you. I'll think about that for a second. Where did I put the new kit? I buried it under a bunch of sewing tissue that we're gonna use next. All right, so this kit is called Christmas 1933 because all the background you see in here is a newspaper from 1933. Well, it's actually a bunch of newspapers. I have a friend who gave me a whole bunch of old newspapers. They're literally just disintegrating. So it's like I took them and collaged pieces onto other pieces of paper and then I scanned them to get the background. And then I added on top all the colorful bits that you see. But all this uh, kind of sepia background is all the old, real, vintage 1933 newspaper, okay? So there's the first one. It's a 26 page digital. Isn't he so cute? Uh, I just love it. And then chestnuts, two pounds for 25 cents. I don't know, just adorable. Anyways, I had a lot of fun making it. So it's 25 pages. But yeah, the, it's so grungy and some of that paper is just disgusting. <laughs> I don't know where it was, but anyway. It's just gross. So it's kind of a good way to, to get to use it without having to touch the actual newspaper. Um, this is just like the classifieds sort of. I mean, I, I um, collaged it all. So it's not like just straight out the classifieds. They're all collaged pieces. And then put the poinsettias over. But it's real muted. So I think you could write on this or back things, you know, with it at least. And then there's this page that's kind of got, you can see the newspaper peeking through in spots. And you can definitely see it through the um, image there. And then here's another one of these style. So some of the backgrounds you'll see more than once. Like this is that, uh, that same, the classified part. But I just put different things on top of them and... This is another piece that I added. It's so cool. I love the writing in this lady. I don't know. They're just, it was just a cool old newspaper. And this is another good maybe backing page or something. And then I also did just the collage pages with nothing added on top of them. So these are all just the newspaper collaged, basically. <laughs> I love these Santas, so cute. The nativity there's neat and the toys. So it's all, it was newspapers that were all like from November of 1933. So they have a lot of the Christmas, you know, stuff in them. So those ones are those. And then you'll get lots of tags. 
big tags, little tags, journaling card, just a few pages of those. And then this is just tags. So this, you could make like a tag book out of it if you wanted to. And if you print with a border, you won't get so close over here. But it doesn't, I mean, the whole tag's there. It's just right up to the edge. So that's just up to you how you want to print them. But sometimes the ephemera um, does get close to the edge. And I do say that uh, in my Etsy shop in the description, it'll tell you to print with a border if you want to make sure it's not cutting anything off. And then I did do some pockets. There's a page of fussy cuts. There's some <clears throat> kind of Polaroids. I mean, they're not Polaroids because they're not photographs, but you know what I mean? They have that um, border like or frame like a Polaroid. So just fun little bits to decorate with or stick in pockets or whatever. And then there's pieces of the newspaper, all little bits that I cut out and added. And then there's some pockets, just bits to add on pockets or wherever. And then I did do just a few labels, these ones, which I wanna use one of those. <clears throat> and then there's one number 10 window envelope cover. I didn't do any other um, envelope covers, but the cool thing about these, even if you don't have number 10 window envelopes, and I know I say this all the time, but we always have new people. so. Uh, these were originally meant to cover number 10 window envelopes um, and you could cover both sides and I don't have one right here of course but anyway you cut these out and then you put it onto a window envelope and you can do both sides of the window envelope that way so if you want to make your window envelope a page in your journal you can cover that or you can just cut these out turn them into different cool pockets. You don't ha even have to have a number 10 window envelope. You cut this out, put a piece of acetate behind it, fold this into whatever kind of pocket you want, and then voila, you have your own faux number 10 window envelope. Okay, so just a thought. But for this, I want one of these. <laughs> Long story short. So I think I want, I don't know which one I want. I think I want this one. So yeah, 1933, or Christmas 1933 is what it's called. It's 26 pages. Lots you can do with all the different bits and pieces. Lots of play. I think I want that on here. And then I think I am going to use this lady. I just love that coat. <laughs> that coat is the money. But this one would also be very cool. But I think I'm just going to, I'm just doing the, the coat. And then I have some of these left over from Stampin' Up. And then put on maybe a couple snowflakes. These are in my Etsy shop, if that's anything you're interested in. Yeah, we'll just put those on. All right, I think I think I'm good. I think we got parts we can use. And the cool thing about use doing these colorful is then these things like photographs or you know these Tim Holtz pieces look neat on those. I mean, you could definitely like use one of the Santas, but I think it looks neat to have the. Um, what do you call that? Contrast, that's the word. So yeah, fun stuff. Thank you, Carol, fantastic idea. I mentioned in that video that you could use like, you know, sometimes you get those color packs of paper and they all have, you know, one color in different shades. That's sort of what I was thinking. And she just ran with it in another direction with the print papers. And that was fantastic. I love it. So fun. She used so many of my digitals too. She's just the sweetest. 
her and Nancy and Mitzi and Linda. They all play with my digitals and I really appreciate that. So that people can see different ways than just the way I do it, you know? And some I just don't get to, like some digitals I just never get around to because it's just this constant, you know, the next thing, the next holiday, the next whatever. It makes it tricky. But I like to give you guys lots of variety because I know not everybody likes the same styles and things. Oh, I wanted to put that under, huh? <coughs> Sorry, I still am struggling a little bit with whenever the weather changes. It's it's that time of the year for me with the leaf raking and the field plowing and all of those things. It really gets me. What are you guys up to? Anything fun? Hopefully. I can't believe I'm already making Christmas stuff again. I feel like I just did this. Oi, oi, oi. Not ready. I am not ready for it. I mean, I was ready for the temperature to cool a little bit, but not ready for Christmas. <clears throat> I really like this PVA glue. I mean, yeah, I don't have the itty bitty tip, but it seems to work just fine. And I got it on Amazon. I don't know where else, who else has it? I don't have the greatest luck finding things at our craft stores here. So yeah, if you do, you're lucky. <laughs> Hobby Lobby is about the best. Our Joann's is a complete disaster. And I just am not willing to drive very far. <laughs> I don't like driving into Boise unless I have to. Go see my kids, but that's about it. And these snowflakes I cut on the Glowforge. If you don't know, they're in my shop. And they're there. I try to keep them there all year round. Sometimes I take them out for a little while if <clears throat> I just need to for whatever reason, but they're usually always in the shop. I keep losing my paper towel because I use it and just chuck it. <laughs> okay, so something new to me is this style of paint chip with the print. And I like it. I like it a lot. It's very cute. I feel like I do need something down here, but I don't know what. I don't know, I don't know. Let's see. A little bit of lace, maybe? No. Oh, I know, I have these. I wonder if I put a cute little, let's do these little snowmen. Just as. I don't know why, just because. Mm 
because why not? Little snowmen. There we go. Like it. Okay. So that one's down. Now it says dr a dream, like, and you can interpret again however you like. <laughs> I always thought I took Nevada history in school because I grew up in Nevada and you had to have Nevada history. So um, when I heard about this hotel, this is called the International Hotel, and that is in the itty bitty town that I grew up in in the 1800s. It burnt down to the ground in, let me see, what did I, I wrote it down because I couldn't remember. 1914 is when it burnt to the ground. So my whole entire time growing up, there's a parking lot here. And it's not a big parking lot either. <laughs> so um, I always thought it would be amazing to go back in time and see this. Because underneath it, there's also, it's called a ballroom stope. And if you know anything about mining, a stope is an area where they've taken out a lot of ore, you know, rock and ore and all that. And so it leaves just a huge hole, basically, or cave or cavern or however you want to say it. But um, so underneath this hotel, there's there's supposedly a big stope and they called it the ballroom stope because they would have balls down there. You know, everybody get dressed up and go to the ball underneath this building. And so I always thought, because the parking lot, like I said, is there, how cool would it be to um, go back in time and see all of that? I mean, I, and even not even going back in time, but I always thought it would be so cool to do an archaeological dig on the, on that uh, parking lot and see the ballroom stope underneath if, you, if it wasn't caved in or if you could still see it or whatever. So anyhow, <coughs> this is the parking lot. Now it doesn't look even big enough and when you're there, you cannot imagine this six-story building being in that spot. But this building right here was there. So it's not like it's this building right here. It's not like, oh, that one wasn't there or anything. That building that's there right now was there. So it was in this spot right in front of Piper's Opera House. That's the opera house for... Um, the town but six stories and it's so cool if you look at this one I don't know what is going on here the front of this building is all falling down and stuff but uh if you look down the main street that's the International Hotel right there and it was the largest in Nevada uh at its you know at its big time this one see you can see that building's all falling down but look at how massive it is it's crazy when I see these pictures because I can't I for the life of me can't imagine it being there anyhow <laughs> Now that you've had your history lesson for the day. Um, I have some tissue, some sewing tissue, and it's just, let's see, one, two, four, four sheets. I just took a large piece and I just folded it as flat as I could get it because I'm going to kind of turn it into a little booklet and it's not going to be this wide. It's going to be, you know, I want to, I'll decorate it first and then cut it down. Um, I got this out of this book that is an old railroad directory 1873 and 74 so um when this one says international hotel it is the international hotel but it was only like two stories when they originally built it it burnt down twice <laughs> it was never meant to be let's just say that so um it, i mean it was very common at that in those time periods for fires to take everything out take whole towns out and stuff like that but anyway um yeah so it, it ended up burning down three times but the international hotel that i would love to see is the six-story one that was built in 1860 or no uh 1877 sorry i'm looking at my cheat sheet because i can never remember dates but yeah Three times that burnt down. So this ad is not 
from when it was when it looked like this but it's just fun because that is the same place on the corner of c and union b street yep same place <coughs> so that's what we're gonna play with because that's my dream would be to see well i mean i have lots of dreams but um i would just love to see it in its heyday because it just boggles my brain every time i think about it being in that spot like how did it even fit I just, yeah. And the ballroom stope underneath, learning about that and Nevada history was just fascinating to me. So it would be too fun. So I'm just gonna kind of do a collage on the front and then I'm gonna use my pinking shears to cut this sewing tissue. So if you have loads of sewing tissue, I know it's crooked, it's fine. Um, this is an idea to use it. You can make all kinds, of, you can make little booklets, you can make pockets, just like I said, fold it up however you want it, stitch it together, or you could glue it together. I just like it stitched, but, and then voila, you've got, you've got it. And I, I don't want to go over too far, like I don't want it to be too huge of a Book, so I am covering a lot of this, but I mostly just want where it says International Hotel. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to put that there. <coughs> <Just. coughs> it would just be too cool to see it. That's when you wish you had a time machine, right? Well, my husband and I talk about that quite frequently. We wish we had a time machine. Oh, I was gonna put that underneath of there. It worked, yay, okay. Um, yeah, we often wish we had a time machine. We loved the 80s. <laughs> that was our time growing up and it was just, can I just say awesome? <clears throat> I know everybody thinks their time growing up, you know, when, like when you're a teenager, usually for the most part is awesome because it's probably the most fun. I don't know. The music and, you know. <clears throat> but we often talk about that. And one of his all-time favorite movies, and we saw all of them. And we've seen them all a thousand times because we used to watch them with our kids, is Back to the Future. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit further than I had it before. Um, yeah, that's like his, he loved those movies. Oh, you guys. Oh, well, it's gone now. I tore the corner off. I tore it right off. Okay. And then I'm going to glue this piece of lace. I was going to put those underneath too. Now I'm like, I don't think I'm going to worry about these right this minute. I am going to put this piece of lace over here though. <clears throat> I am too busy jabbering and not busy enough paying attention to what I'm doing here. But my, my family lived there uh, in Virginia City for four generations. So my family was there when the International Hotel was there and everything. I mean, that's why they came there. They're miners from Ireland. And so they came to mine. <coughs> that's how my family ended up there. I'm going to stitch that. So... And my grandfather was four years old when it burnt down, so he didn't have like a real, you know, memory of it or anything. And he was my oldest living relative when I was growing up, so. But yeah, I'd have loved to have seen it. Would have been so cool. 
you know, while I was growing up, it was just a tourist trap. <laughs> like, I, I worked on C Street, which is this main street here, in gift shops, in a candy store. It was actually my husband's family's candy store. Um, and it's just an entirely different vibe than this kind of vibe. So, I don't know. I think I just would have loved to have seen it when it was in its heyday. Yeah, they were mining, if you don't know anything about it, the Comstock Lode, which was a huge, long silver ore deposit. And it basically built San Francisco. Um, Mackie, who ended up going to San Francisco, and, well, a lot of them, Mackie, Fairflood, and O'Brien, they all got very wealthy on the Comstock. And, you know, they had their places there, too, but they ended up going to San Francisco. And The thing I loved about San Francisco is the Sutro Baths, the original of that also I would have loved to have seen because it's another thing that burnt down. And my husband and kids and I all went there. Mm, gosh, it's been... probably 15 years ago <clears throat> or so. And it, you know, it doesn't look the same. It was, it was another really cool building in the 1800s. <coughs> but yeah, those fires, man, they just destroyed a lot of stuff. I'm gonna make sure I didn't have anything else in here. So I'm gonna do some stitching on that, but I'm going to cut this out. I'm gonna cut it fairly close to where that book page is and it's probably not going to be straight but I'm not going to get all flummoxed about that it's just kind of a cool little thing to either just send in happy mail or um you could even stitch it into a journal you know, have it as a page, stitch it. That would work too. I'm gonna go do some stitching on this and then I'll come back because I wanna do the stitching before I do the rest of it. So anyway, see, but now it's all loose and falling apart because it's all separate pieces. So I need to be careful. All right, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I stitched all around. I stitched the lace just so it would stay. <laughs> stay. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, let's clip this because I like that term's reasonable. That's cool. Uh, my best friend growing up that you hear me talk about all the time, Michelle, has a bakery in this, not this little one right next to it, but the one after it, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. But anyway... She does. I'm going to put, she's my uh, lifelong friend. We've known each other since we were six. I'm going to put one of these pockets. This one's from my Dragon Rider kit here. And then on this, I think I just want to put maybe something like that. I kind of don't want to cover that 15, but I think I will. <coughs> actually this is some of that uh, page left over from my fall journal that cool paper it's just really cool paper that'll help give it a little more body too but I do love these they kind of are crinkly and fabulous so I do like them yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do now that you've had your history lesson for the day oh and I didn't even say anything about this these are Tim Holtz P 
pieces. I'm sure you guys figured that out. I just stamped on there 1877. You can probably tell because it's definitely not perfect. But um, yeah, because that's when that version of it was built. And then it burnt down in 1914 for the last time. And they just obviously never built it again. By then, um, Virginia City was considered a quote-unquote ghost town. The, the mines were done. Everybody was leaving. I mean, not everybody, because obviously there were quite a few families that stayed there after that. <clears throat> but they just had to find different employment and whatnot. grandfather actually ended up going and working in Hawthorne but that was quite a bit later but still it's funny that we still ended up in Virginia City he became county assessor after that but yeah And then my dad was county assessor after he was. <laughs> and my sister and I both left. <laughs> mm. I haven't been back in so long. Oh my goodness. It's hard once your parents are gone and stuff. I don't know, it's hard for me to go there now without my dad there. It's crushing. <laughs> I kinda wanna make a tag to put in there. I don't know how much we can get I like both of these pictures, but I really like the staining and everything, and the whole thing is just not going to fit on there. I think I'll go with this little bit bigger one. All the snow in this one kills me, because yes, it snows there like whew, a lot, a lot, a lot. We get enough snow here. I don't I don't miss that part. I do miss the blue skies in Nevada in the winter because even if it snows or storms or whatever, um I'm gonna have to take some of this away. It the sky always is blue at some point in the day. We get a lot of inversions and stuff where we're at now. In Idaho A lot of fog and gray and I'm going to try to tear this a little bit more even. Just a glue book page. Don't hold me responsible for any words on it. <laughs> As I always say, I didn't write the book. Okay, I don't need it this big. How tall is this? I guess I should have figured that out, huh? I'll tear it off about here. Didn't write the book. What else can we put on here? See, I did not plan for this part. I apologize. I originally was just gonna do a uh, like a journaling card. And then last night I got thinking, I need to play with some sewing tissue because I have buckets of it. So yeah. That was a last minute choice. So I'm gonna have to tear this down more even. <clears throat> that hotel was just amazing. This is 
side so it has writing further up. This paper is completely, doesn't even really need to be inked, honestly. <clears throat> yeah, that's how my husband and I met is he would come for the summer to stay with his dad and work in the candy store because <laughs> mom and dad were divorced by that time and that's how we met. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, what else should I put on there? Just grabbing stuff now. <laughs> grabbing scraps. Oops. I don't need to really do that top part. And then he ended up moving to Nevada and spent his last year of high school there. And then we went to college together, got married, and then moved back here. <laughs> Not quite that fast, but <clears throat> to Idaho, which is where he grew up. I know, life story, blah, blah. I have people sometimes tell me, we don't need to hear your life story, but you know, I'm crafting and don't know what else to talk about. So it's on my mind now because I did this. So I apologize to anyone who doesn't want to hear my life story. <clears throat> Grabbing scraps. I'll have to back that too. <clears throat> Probably should have backed it before I did this, right? And I'll stitch around it. But that will work. See, so that can go right into a book. And the cool part about doing this as my dream is I can, um, what do you call it? Oh, do like a vintage, it's vintage style. So I have some other pieces that I can also use. I put that on there <clears throat> and put it in a journal and it won't be something so specific. That's another thing you got to think of <laughs> when you're doing this challenge. If you want to use the pieces is what could I make that I can use again? Or something do I have any other little bits I have that I have this piece do I want to put that anywhere <clears throat> sorry I know that is so annoying I can't really help it unfortunately that's either that or I'm gonna lose my voice <laughs> brings that color around a little bit. I do feel like it needs something down here, but I don't know if I have anything. 
that'll work. Uh, I don't like that. <coughs> yeah, it's too big. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. I think we'll just leave it where it's at for now. All right, so something new to me was doing the paint chips using the paper, the scrapbook paper. And then dream is to see, I would love to see, obviously I'll never get that dream, but how awesome would it be to see that building? And then the, the ballroom underneath. But anyway, a fun piece to use in a journal. And it's got that crinkly, crinkly crunchy factor. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you give this a whirl and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and we'll chat again soon. Love you. Bye.